This video explains how to use the new keyframes feature in Shotcut 1805. Here we have a blank startup screen of Shotcut with the timeline appearing at the bottom. And we'll open up a clip here. There's really uh, three parts to this keyframes feature. First, we have to click the keyframes button to open the keyframes panel. There's The first part is filter trimming, second is simple keyframes, and third is advanced keyframes. <clears throat> First I'll show the filter trimming. Let's say we went to just put text on a few seconds of the video at this point. At the, so we would click here to add a filter, find text filter, add it, change our text something, you know, We're going to annotate our video with this text to correct something that we said, for example. We'll place it there. Going down to the uh, keyframes panel, you can see there's this green bar on the left-hand side that's a trim handle to trim the endpoint of the filter, and we'll click and drag it over to our cursor position. And then I'll press uh, the down page down four times for four seconds. One, two, three, four. And this is going to be our ending position. And we have to find the end of the clip, which we see here there's a red bar handle at the end. And you can drag that down to your cursor position. And now the text filter is only showing for four seconds of the video. There's no other uh, key framing features yet for the text filter. You can see there's no keyframes button here in the filter uh, UI. And in the corners, top left and right hand corners of the uh, filters panel, there's no little circle controls for simple keyframes, which we'll show next. So let's open up, <clears throat> we'll show you how to uh, do a smooth pan and zoom on a still image. There's a still image, I'll open that up, using the simple keyframes. <clears throat> so I'll click to add a filter, scroll down, we'll find size and position. And this a little bit. Now there is these little uh, drag handles, circular drag handles in the top left and top right hand corners. And this is what we use for simple animations. Um, <clears throat> you just slag, uh, drag in these circular controls and out a certain duration. And, and the default starting position is off screen to the left and we'll create a slide in. But let's say we want to do that smooth pan and zoom. <clears throat> what we just want to do is move this over a little bit that way and enlarge it. So we say basically set up our enlarged state and then go to the beginning. We can adjust the beginning. Uh, we cannot just adjust the middle. The uh, controls are disabled at this point. But if we go to the beginning, we'll just change our position to zero. And now, if we play, oops, we get smooth. But let's extend that across the entire duration. If we drag that all, all the way to the right. And now this image does a smooth pan and zoom. More zooming than panning now. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. You know, there's also the ability to do something where uh, you change the end state. 
So by default, the end state is off the right hand side. Uh, let's just show how that would look. But we could change that. We go to the end, and then we could say change that to say to reset it back to zero full screen. Okay, so that's simple animation. Next, we'll look at uh, advanced keyframes. So let me close. We don't have to close, but we can just uh, open up a new clip. Going back to this little island. <clears throat> and we'll take a look at the brightness filter. There it is. And we can change, we can set an endpoint and an out point on the clip in general. Um, in the keyframes panel. We'll adjust accordingly. To set a, a, a new keyframe at this position, click the keyframes button, and it adds that parameter <clears throat> to the keyframes panel. Now this particular parameter has a well-defined numeric range, so we have a curve uh, display, but not all uh, advanced keyframes supports curves. We can also right click the keyframe and choose remove or change the interpolation type and make it smooth. And now when we go to a new position and change the value, it adds a keyframe at that place and it creates a smooth transition from one state to the next, as you can see in these lines. And if we play that, Now you can uh, click a keyframe and go to that position when you click it. Um, you cannot drag it at this time, but you can remove it. There's another way to remove it by clicking the trash can over here or uh, by um, right clicking. You can right click on the keyframe to remove it. But let's go ahead and add the keyframe back here. You can also navigate between keyframes using these buttons. So if you want to adjust the value of the particular keyframe, you just click to go to it or use the um, seeking buttons and then change its value like that. At this point, if you uh, click the keyframes button for this pan uh, parameter again, it's going to display this confirmation dialog because it will remove the key, all the keyframes for that parameter. So let's choose no. Also, if you'll see that this particular filter supports simple keyframing as well. And if you end up using one of those controls after you've defined, defined some um, advanced keyframes, it will just erase them and introduce that particular simple animation. That's it.